One of the most common attempts I've seen used to try and discredit or brush off the philosophy of antinatalism is the claim that it is a belief only held by those who are severely depressed or ill in general, and that the only reason they feel this way is due to their perception of reality being flawed due to their illness. And while it makes logical sense that those who are in a great state of suffering should have an easier time recognizing that the imposition of life is a very messy, risky sort of thing to play with, you know, people who have been fortunate in their own lives should be able to recognize this risk as well. And upon recognizing this risk, we must ask ourselves, you know, what is it that justifies this risk? And there have also been studies done that have shown how those suffering with light to moderate depression are more likely to view life more accurately, more realistically, than those who have never dealt with any form of depression before. And this is largely due, in large part, due to our hardwired sort of optimism biases that are found in the vast majority of people. And there's a good article that goes more into depressive realism that I will link in the description. But yeah, if your own subjective life going tolerably well so far has led you to believe that creating a, a brand new human being is a nice thing to do for them, you know, as though you are doing your prospective child a favor by bringing them into existence, affording them the, the gift of life, I would argue that your view of life and the world around you is more skewed and flawed than even those with some of the most severe cases of depression. I've also seen many people claim that having this outlook is a sign of mental weakness, as if thoughtlessly creating children in spite of the cruel nature of life, in turn, is a sign of, of mental toughness. Many of the people who claim to feel this way aren't able to comprehend the number of bullets they've dodged throughout their lives by sheer chance. You know, they have no real understanding of their own capacity to experience physical and psychological suffering. They have no real appreciation for how fortunate they've truly been. I don't believe that life in of itself is a gift, but it is inarguable that a life in possession of physical and mental health, when directly compared to a life of ceaseless suffering, is an enormous gift that countless people, myself included, take for granted every single day. Many of the people who claim that life in general is a gift aren't able to endure even the most moderate, productive discomforts, like taking good care of their bodies and minds with a you know, healthy diet, consistent exercise, meditation, good sleep, uh, a constant striving to develop a, a better understanding of the world around them. They claim to be immensely grateful for their lives, grateful to have been born, and yet they slowly kill themselves and waste countless hours in the pursuit of, of petty, selfish pleasure-seeking and distraction from reality. And if they are to make the claim that these silly, ephemeral pleasures are what make life worth living or worth creating, I don't understand how they could view their lives as any more valuable than any of the other mammals on this planet. For those of you who feel that imposing life is worth it, that the roll of the dice is worth it, those who feel that you getting to play the game of life is worth all the victims of pediatric cancer, worth all the people rotting away in nursing homes with nothing left to do but wait for death, and not even afforded the, the right to die with dignity of, of their own volition in a first world, civilized country. And for the people who truly feel this way, I ask you to please at least act like it. You know, when you go on to say that life is a beautiful gift, while you continue to waste so much time and energy on, on distractions, selfish scheming, and instant gratification, it is a gigantic slap in the face to those who are in un unimaginable states of suffering. You know, to those whose bodies and minds you, you or I wouldn't be able to last a day inside of without seriously contemplating suicide. 
You know, so I ask you to please take care of your health so that you can continue to enjoy your gift of a quality of life for as long as you can. You know, there is no force or entity in the universe that is looking out for your well-being. You and I are no more deserving of our physical and mental health than those whose lives are a complete living hell each day. Do not avoid this truth.